The next speaker is Andrew Watson from um, Nebraska. And Andrew is going to talk about a decision aid tool that was uh, put together a number of years ago by the group in Nebraska and has since been enhanced uh, a number of versions. Uh, it gets at this whole issue of trying to integrate uh, feed management at the whole farm level and, and uh, manure management the whole economic picture. So with that, uh, Andrea. Thank you very much. Uh, this was a collaborative effort uh, with a lot of work done by uh, Ray Massey, Joe Harrison, Rick Kelsch, and Galen Erickson uh, to put this tool together. So uh, BFNMP stands for Beef Feed Nutrient Management Planning Economics Program. And uh, this is a software tool that was put together to aid feedlot producers specifically to see what impacts changes to their operation could have on their nutrient management plan and the bottom line of how could it impact their economic uh, input. Uh, the tool is available to download for free as well as a user guide at water.unl.edu. Uh, there are also several beef reports that have been written about uh, scenarios through this program and they can also be downloaded uh, for free at beef.unl.edu. So the BFNMP program is really broken down into four modules, and within each module, uh, the operator is, used to, uh, is asked to put in inputs or answer questions about their specific operation. At each step, uh, there are default values, so if you don't know for your specific operation, you just use the default values and can still get answers. So the first module would be excretion by the cattle. Uh, for this, you would be asked questions about what kind of diet are you feeding to those cattle? What kind of performance do you expect, such as average daily gain, dry matter intake, uh, and days on feed? Uh, the second module then will be manure management. Uh, so then you're asked questions about the manure characteristics coming off of your farm, uh, dry matter, ash contamination, things like that. Third uh, module then is the cropping system that you're utilizing. So what type of crops are you growing? What type of rotation are you using? Uh, yields that you expect? Application rate then of that manure? And then the final module uh, would be the economics. Uh, so to get to the economics, you need to put in what kind of equipment that you're using and how much fuel costs, how much your labor costs, things like that. And then the final, the output would be uh, how many nutrients are in your manure? Uh, how much land you need to apply that manure to, and how much time, and then the economics that go with it. So I'd like to step through several scenarios that we've done using this program and kind of show you how changing different things can impact uh, really the nutrients in the manure. So the first step, or that first module, would be animal management. So for these scenarios, we used a 5,000 head feedlot uh, with 100 head of cattle per pin. Those cattle come into the feedlot at 750 pounds and exit at 1,300 pounds. Uh, they're given 23 pounds of dry matter intake per day, uh, and they're on feed for 144 days. So all of these things would be uh, inputs that we chose, and for your specific operation could be changed to whatever you're using to make it more specific. Uh, we then wanted to look specifically at how varying the nitrogen and phosphorus content of that uh, diet will impact the manure quality. Step two then is the manure management questions. Uh, so for equipment, we used a four-yard loader and a 20-ton truck-mounted spreader. Uh, we assumed that it would take two hours to clean each pin, and uh, we used uh, $3 per gallon for fuel costs and $12 per hour for labor cost. These are all open lot, feed lot, soil-based pins. Uh, that manure is hauled out of the pin and stockpiled for at least 100 days. Uh, once it's hauled out to the crop ground, then it's uh, immediately incorporated. And then uh, the second scenario that we want to look at is varying nitrogen volatilization from that manure and how that changes the economics. For crops, uh, we used 80 acre fields. A big assumption that we used was that 50% of the land around the feedlot is available to the feedlot to spread manure on. So it's in crops and it's available to the feedlot. Uh, we used a corn soybean rotation with corn yields of 157 bushels per acre and soybean yields of 42 bushels per acre. Uh, we did assign fertilizer prices to those manure nutrients. So for the nitrogen, we valued that at 55 cents per pound of nitrogen, uh, which is the same as 25 cents per pound of urea. Uh, the phosphorus is valued at 67 cents per pound or 30 cents per pound of P205. 
and then the potassium is valued at 53 cents per pound or 32 cents per pound of K2O. Again, these are uh, things that you can change if you feel that those are not the correct values. The third scenario then is to vary how we apply that manure, whether it's on a nitrogen basis or a phosphorus basis. So looking at the impact of diet, what happens if we feed a grain-based traditional corn diet? Uh, we assume that that would be a 13.3% crude protein diet and 0.3% phosphorus. And we're going to compare that then to a distiller's grains diet. Uh, we used a 40% distiller's grains diet. Uh, that diet then is 18.7% crude protein and 0.5% phosphorus. So here is the output that comes out of this uh, software tool. Uh, here I have uh, the blue bars will be that corn-based traditional diet and the red is the 40% distiller's grains diet. And we're putting a value per animal on that manure. So for the corn-based control diet, that manure is valued at $21.53 per animal. For the distiller's grains diet, that uh, value is $29.70 per animal. Costs also go up when you have increased uh, nutrients, you have to haul that manure further. It also costs a little bit more to clean those pins and get the manure out. So costs go up for that 40% distiller's grains diet. Uh, the white numbers then on those smaller bars would be the distance that you have to haul that manure. So for the corn-based diet, we're hauling that manure an average of 0.4 miles away from the feedlot or a maximum of 0.7 miles away from the feedlot. For that distiller's grains diet, then we have to go a little further. So we're hauling that manure on average 0.5 miles away from the feedlot or a maximum of 0.9 miles. But the overall revenue or value of that manure, after you take value minus cost, the revenue is still greater for that distiller's grains manure at $21.06 per head compared to $14.14 .14 for the corn control diet. If we look at uh, nutrients in that manure, again, for that corn-based a controlled diet in the blue, we see that uh, manure nitrogen is just under 80,000 pounds per year for that 5,000 head feedlot. Uh, the distiller's grains diet then is up around almost 120,000 pounds of nitrogen per year. Now uh, we want to look at how we're going to apply this manure. So right now I have it set up to apply to meet the nitrogen, meet the nitrogen needs of our crops. So you can see that the manure nitrogen and the crop nitrogen required are exactly matched whether that's uh, for the corn control diet or the distiller's grains diet, you just spread on more acres with the distiller's diet. The issue then uh, comes in with how much phosphorus, which this is actually P205 now, how much phosphorus is in that uh, manure compared to how much the crops actually required. So we have about four times too much phosphorus applied to those acres compared to what the crops will actually use. So we had 110,000, almost 111,000 pounds of additional P205 added to those acres with the distiller's grains diet. So that gets to the second scenario. What happens if we apply that manure to meet the needs of the crops for one year of nitrogen or to meet the, need, the phosphorus needs for one year or a third scenario to meet the phosphorus needs of the crops for four years. And I'm going to try to suggest that the four year phosphorus basis uh, application rate is the ideal way to spread the manure. So here I'm using that distiller's grains diet now for all of the scenarios and just varying how we apply the manure. So the value of the manure does not change. No matter how you apply it, the value stays the same at $29.70 per head. The cost then does vary greatly depending on how you apply it. So if you apply it on a one-year nitrogen basis, it costs approximately $8.64 uh, per animal. You're going to haul that manure 0.5 miles on average away from your feedlot or 0.9 miles a maximum away from your feedlot. The cost to apply on a one-year phosphorus basis is nearly $20 per animal or the cost to apply on a four-year phosphorus basis is very near or very close to the one-year nitrogen basis at $9.35. Now, uh, the, the value minus the cost, so the total revenue, is about the same whether you do it on a nitrogen basis or four-year phosphorus basis, right around $20 to $21 per animal. If you're doing it on that one-year phosphorus basis, uh, your total revenue is closer to $10. So here we're going to look at the nutrients in that manure. So uh, no matter how we spread it, the, the nutrients are the same. We have just over 100,000 uh, pounds of nitrogen to spread. 
the crop nitrogen required uh, for the blue, if we spread on a nitrogen basis, we exactly meet the crop needs. However, if we spread on a one-year phosphorus basis, that red bar uh, shows how deficient we are in uh, nitrogen for the crop. So we're going to have to come in with an additional nitrogen source, such as enhancers, ammonia, or something like that, to meet the crop nitrogen needs, which further uh, makes this more expensive for the uh, farmer. But the green bar here, uh, with the four-year phosphorus basis, we can really meet the nitrogen needs of that crop. And if we come over here to phosphorus, we can again match the phosphorus needs of the crop to the manure phosphorus available. So to spread on a four-year phosphorus basis, if we pretend that this is our feedlot here in the middle of the circle, uh, the inner circle then is 0.9 miles away from that feedlot, and that would be uh, representing 1,000 acres, which is how far you would have to uh, haul the manure to spread on a nitrogen basis. The bigger circle then is 2.1 miles away from your feedlot, and that represents almost 4,000 acres, which is how much is needed to spread your manure if you're spreading on a phosphorus basis. So if you're spreading on a nitrogen basis, you'll just spread your manure within that inner circle every year. If you're spreading on a one-year phosphorus basis, you would spread the manure on that entire circle every year. But if you're doing it on a four-year phosphorus basis, in year one, you simply apply all of your manure to that one-fourth of your acres, uh, and then you come in and plant corn on those acres. Year two, then, your manure would go into the second section, or this one-fourth of your acres. You come in and plant corn there. Your, uh, where you applied manure the year before, you're gonna come in with soybeans. There's plenty of phosphorus for the beans. Uh, you don't need an additional nitrogen source, so you don't have to do anything extra there. Year three, you're going to apply your manure in your third section down here. Uh, the, where you applied uh, manure two years ago, you're gonna come back in with corn. You will need additional nitrogen on those acres in this year for the corn, but where the soybeans go, you'll have plenty of phosphorus and uh, don't need any additional nitrogen. Year four, you now apply your manure in that last section of ground that has not gotten uh, any manure yet. Uh, you'll have to go in where you're planting corn with an additional nitrogen source and don't have to do anything with the beans. So you're applying manure on a total of almost 4,000 acres, but each year you only apply on about 1,000 acres. And then the third scenario is looking at the impact of nitrogen volatilization. So in the summer, uh, we can have up to 70 or even more percent of that nitrogen being volatilized off of the pin surface. In the winter, uh, it can be closer to 50%, so we are able to trap more of the nitrogen in the manure. And then with intensive manure management, we could possibly get as low as 20% nitrogen volatilization. Uh, that's an area of a lot of ongoing research, uh, trying to maybe increase the organic matter on the pin surface to trap more of that manure. A more frequent pin cleaning can trap more of that manure. Uh, and it's, it's not a perfect science yet, and we're still looking at ways to uh, decrease nitrogen volatilization. But for this, I just want to show what the economics or what the value of that nitrogen is. So again, if we go with that distiller's grains diet, uh, showing the value of the manure, if we uh, have 70% volatilization with the blue, uh, the value of that manure then is $24.76 per head. If instead we have 50% volatilization, so we're able to trap more of the nitrogen, the value of that manure goes up to $29.70. Then if we have an even further decreased nitrogen volatilization, uh, we may be able to get that value up as high as $37.11 per head. Now the cost uh, does keep going up as well as you uh, uh, pull more manure out of those pins as you have to haul those nutrients further the cost does go up but overall revenue is still uh, greatest for that 20 percent nitrogen volatilization at uh, over 26 dollars per head if we look at the nutrients in that manure then uh, with uh, 70 percent nitrogen volatilization we're pulling about 67,400 pounds of nitrogen out of those pins if we're able to trap 80% uh, of the nitrogen, uh, that can be as high as almost 180,000 pounds of nitrogen. Now the phosphorus, which this is P205, uh, does not uh, volatilize in the same way that nitrogen does, so we really don't see that problem. Uh, no matter what we're doing to nitrogen, we really have about 150,000 pounds of phosphorus. 
So really, uh, where I'm applying these treatments, the 70, 50, or 20% nitrogen volatilization is right there from excreted nitrogen to post-housing. That's where these losses occur before we even get it out of the pin. So we start out with uh, 444,340 pounds of nitrogen excreted from the animal with this 5,000 head feedlot. Uh, Post-housing, we lose that. Post storage, so after stockpiling and getting it out to the crop field, we lose even more nitrogen. And then uh, how much is actually crop available, we have a further loss. Uh, so what's actually crop available may be about 67,400 uh, pounds for the 70% nitrogen volatilization or almost 180,000 pounds for the 20% nitrogen volatilization. This might mean a lot more if I put uh, money with it or a value on it. So that excreted nitrogen is worth uh, $244,387. By the time we get down here to crop available, that's less than $100,000 for the best case scenario and $37,000 for that 70% nitrogen volatilization. So if we go from uh, the excreted nitrogen down to 50% nitrogen loss, that's a decrease of $182,600 that are literally just volatilized and lost to the air. If we go from 20% nitrogen volatilization up to 70, that's a further uh, decrease of almost $62,000 that we're losing in revenue. Uh, to kind of break this down and show you where that value of the manure is coming from, uh, the green now will be the value of the K2O within that manure, the red is the value of the P2O5, and the blue is the value of the nitrogen. So the first three are gonna be that distiller's greens diet, going from 20% nitrogen volatilization all the way up to 70, and then again for the last three bars will be that corn-based control diet, again going from 20% nitrogen volatilization up to 70. So the, no matter uh, all, all six scenarios, the K2O is worth about $37,000. The P2O5 in the distiller's grains case is worth about $45,000, where with the corn control it's worth about $24,000. Uh, with the nitrogen now, with the distiller's grains and 20% nitrogen volatilization, uh, that nitrogen can be worth $96,000. With the corn control diet, it's worth about $65,000. And then uh, if we have 70% volatilization with the distiller's grains diet, that nitrogen is worth about $36,000. With the corn-based diet, uh, the nitrogen is worth about $24,000. So I've tried to show that the diet does impact manure quality and value. Uh, by feeding that 40% distiller's grains diet, we were actually able to increase the manure value by about $8.17 per animal. We increased uh, costs also, but increased total revenue uh, was almost $7 per animal. The impact of application rate, I tried to show that it's really ideal to spread on a four-year phosphorus rate, uh, both for nutrients applied to the land and for economics. And then with nitrogen volatilization, uh, the difference between 70% volatilization or 20% is almost $62,000. So this tool uh, has really been created to try to help feedlot producers see what the impact, especially the economic impact of these changes to their operation could be before they actually implement them and help them uh, as a decision aid tool. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Questions?